Hello YouTube, D. Baudry here. Uh, I have just finished this battery pack. So this is made out of 21700 lithium ion cells that are rated for 4800 4, milliamp hours. And this is a 20S10P pack. So, you know, in the rural fantasy land world of manufacturers, that makes this a 48 amp hour pack. But in the real world, probably more like, say, 40 or 42 amp hours. Um, at 82 volts. Anyway, it is going to go in my scooter, which has got new wheels on it, front and back. Anyway, that space in the back that used to have an LTO battery pack in it is where this is going to go. And down below, I have um, taken out the life battery pack and replaced that with a about a 30 amp hour uh, lithium ion pack that I built out of 18650s. All right, so the real point of this video is I just built this battery pack on a Zhaojing BMS. Let's look at the new app which I just found literally 24 hours ago. So here it is. Um, there are two versions of this app, and let me go over to there to the about page. So I'm running 3.1.1026. There are two versions of this app. There's the user version and this one, which is the admin version. Um, this has most, not quite all, of the functionality and feature sets and, and uh, settings and stuff that are in the Windows app that you um, connect to the BMS via uh, a YouTube or via USB dongle. <laughs> yeah, a YouTube dongle. Yeah, that's what it is. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, um, I probably don't need the Windows app anymore. Not really. Uh, most everything that I care about is now in here. Anyway, this is not the user version. It is the admin version. Um, so, as I get into places, I'll make note of that, uh, that this is probably not a function that is going to be in the user version. It's going to only be in the admin version. So anyway, let's go back to here. Okay, so this is your new dashboard, and this is true for both the admin and the user version. So now AMPS is in here, and this doesn't do anything. Remember before in the old version, that was that padlock. And if the lock was closed, that meant that the BMS was off, and the padlock open meant the BMS was on, which in my opinion was highly confusing. Um, and now they have put two little switches down here at the bottom, two little slider switches. So that one turns off just the charging MOSFETs, and that one turns off just the discharge MOSFETs. So, yay, I like that. I've wanted that on the, uh, on the app a long time, and it's now finally here. Um, uh, this uh, little double chevron button, when you used to press that, it used to present you a lot of this other stuff, like, say, um, you know, pack voltage, um, amp hours remaining, um, you know, wattage, your load, high cell, um, the voltage differences, all that kind of stuff used to all be in there. And now it's all here on the dashboard, which is brilliant. I wanted it there to begin with, especially pack voltage, which is right there. Uh, so if you touch this button, this now does something. Whoops, I didn't want to show you that yet. So now if my four temp sensors that are in this BMS aren't behaving correctly, I can now set them. You know, I can give them an adjustment so that they then read correctly. Um, I've had this app and uh, this BMS on this battery pack for 24 hours, so whether they're right or not, I'm not really sure about. Anyway, um, this button still doesn't do anything, but you know, it gives you that estimate of, of you know, how much run time you've got left, which is pretty meaningless right now because this battery pack has never seen a load on it ever. <laughs> Because it's only been even charged for less than 24 hours, and it's been you know powered up for less than 24 hours. Uh, the, uh, the the now um, pack voltage button, you know, it shows you this graph like we've seen for a very long time. That's you know giving you total pack graph status. Uh, so that's not changed. Um, anyway, uh, so down here, uh, this is absolutely brilliant because if there's if there's three things three things that I care about most. It's amps, pack voltage, and cell status. And it's all right here on the dashboard. Uh, you know, that used to arbitrarily show you speed, so now instead you get this little dial here that moves, you know, if um, you have GPS turned on. Uh, that, I assume, still works. I couldn't care less, because I will never be looking at this thing while I'm writing. I'll be looking at it because you know, I, I'm just curious about battery status, which means I'm probably sitting on the side of the road or just got off from a ride, something like that. But uh, anyway, yeah, that is brilliant right there. I assume that probably there's that little red circle that comes up over here in the upper right-hand corner. That probably still displays like UV, LT, all that kind of two-letter stuff. 
But this down here, this is absolutely brilliant. Now I am looking at 100% of my cells individually and seeing where things are. And they've also got these color changes for the low and high cells. Um, so my high cell, uh, you know, for a pack that's literally been balanced like never, <laughs> or, well, I guess it's been charged once, so it's seen some balancing. But my high cell is 4.095 volts, and my low cell is 4.027 volts. That's not bad. I can live with that. And that's going to, you know, narrow itself down to pretty close to the same pretty darn quickly. Uh, anyway, um, this little button down here in the corner, same page as you've seen before. Uh, this little button down here in the corner, again, same page you've seen before. Nothing, nothing in here has changed. You know, this is just all your st <coughs> status logging stuff that we, we've all come to love and adore for quite a long time. So that's pretty much everything that's on the dashboard in the new Zhao Jing app. I'm pretty happy with this. I like it a lot. Oh, there's one more that I forgot, and um, then I'm going to end this video and make another one. So that double chevron button now does something new, which I kind of, I, I guess I'm glad that it's this way, um, but eh, it's kind of probably redundant. So it brings you to here. So you can't scroll either to left or right. That's, you know, like you can see where it's at the battery state page. Um, but you can see all the cells and you touch one. And now you're looking at the status for that one cell. You know, this graph we've all come to love and adore too. I, I use all that stuff. So you can get to this page very quickly, uh, you know, because it's right off of the dashboard. Or if you don't need the graphs, well, then you get all the cell status right there too. So definitely loving that. Um, you know, just super quick access to all of the things that I use all the time with the Xiao Jing app are all right there, readily accessible from the dashboard. Yippee! <laughs> so, anyway, um, let's move around a little bit. So I already showed you the About page, nothing special there. The elephant's a little bit different, but that's about it. Then the cute little yellow one. Um, so, uh, I'm going to go up to... Uh, oops, I didn't want to do that one. I want to go to uh, this, yeah, the Connect page. So that's exactly the same as before. Nothing has changed. Uh, this list has changed a little bit, so the icons are different, the fonts a little bit different, you know, whoop de doo not really that important. Um, app setting has changed a good bit. Uh, you know, you used to have BMS off, or I mean, um, GPS off down here, and you no longer have that option, which I think is kind of annoying. Um, but this may be stuff that's only in the admin version, or maybe I just didn't notice it before in the user versions, but uh, you can change the uh, BMS name. Actually, you're really, that's really the Bluetooth modem's name, not really the BMS's name, uh, and you can also change the password. So the old password, you know, the factory default password, uh, used to be hard-coded in the app, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. So you put that in there. Now you can set it to something else, which you've never been able to do before. This dashboard type, I don't know what that does. I haven't, I can't tell any different. So you, we all know what the dashboard is, right? So right now, um, I'm going to set it to driving mode, and then I'm going to go back to the dashboard. So there's driving mode, all right? See all that? <laughs> Nothing's really changed there that I can tell. Okay, now I'm going to go back in here, app settings, and I'm going to change it to monitoring mode. And go back. And looks the same to me. <laughs> I don't see anything new. Can't scroll to the left or right. All the same information's on the page. That's the same. That's the same. That's the same. What? <laughs> That's all the same. There's nothing different that I can tell. So I don't know what driving mode does. It doesn't change anything. Uh, your guess is as good as mine what driving and monitor mode does. I'm just leaving it on monitor just because. Uh, because. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, that's. I think that's probably it for this video. Uh, the next one I'm going to go over some new setting stuff that's in here because uh, that's going to get into some greater detail. So expect a second video here in a minute.